Hello, my name is Fiona McFarlane and I'm Head of Public Affairs at The Promise Scotland and this short briefing and presentation is just to give you an overview of the conclusions of the Hearing System Working Group and hopefully help you understand a little bit more about what they mean. So the Hearing System Working Group was set up in October 2021. The group consisted of Children's Hearing Scotland, the Scottish Children's Reporter Administration, um, and obviously uh, the Promise Scotland, um, who led and facilitated the project. Um, it was chaired by Sheriff David Mackey, who was a recently retired sheriff from Alloa Sheriff Court, who had a strong interest in children's hearing system appeals and restorative justice. Uh, Scottish Government were observers on the group throughout the whole process. The work of the Hearing System Working Group really fell into the overall work to keep the promise and what it means for children and young people who live in and around the care system. At the forefront of the group's mind was always the experience of a child, young person and family who experience all the different processes that sit around the children's hearing system. So this is Isla, who was one of the composite stories from the Independent Care Review. And this is an initial map just to see all the different services and inputs and organisations that input into her life when she's um, uh, entering um, the care system. So this is the level of complexity in which the um, children's hearing system work was operating. The final recommendations which were um, concluded um, in May of this year, 2023, were based on 14 chapters and there was around 97 recommendations. This whole work was based on over 500 hours of discussion, which included discussion with children and young people, parents and carers, foster carers, kinship carers, members of the, for a whole variety of the workforce, and also family members who'd had their children removed from their care. It was a really substantive and substantial piece of work with a strong evidence base throughout it, really building on the voices of the independent care review and the fundamentals that lay underneath that. All of that work culminated in this transformational change report called Hearings for Children. Um, that report's on our website, along with a number of other resources. The, ro the report structure is very much led initially by children and young people, so the work engaged strongly with um, lots of groups of young people, and particularly our hearings, our voice, and they wrote the foreword. There's 14 chapters, and in each of those chapters, there's a section that says, what will these changes look like for children and families? The chapters themselves just want to run through effectively what the journey of a system might look like from what the success of the redesign needs to be based on. So the broader work to keep the promise um, for children and families through to the scaffolding of the system, how referrals are made, reasons for decision, the decision making model itself and how children and families participate right through to um, accountability and enforcement and how these recommendations for the hearing system working group might be implemented. As I said before, there's a number of additional resources on the website. So there's a summary of recommendations, there's a child friendly summary of recommendations, there's a little video that shows what a redesign system might look like, and there's two podcasts with Sheriff David Mackey and one with some of the young people from Our Hearings, Our Voice. So, what are the main points that the report says? And I'll just take you through these briefly. The first is to say that context is key. All of this work to change and try redesign the children's hearing system is working within work to keep the promise. It's not a separate piece of work and it is absolutely based on and um, needs to be grounded on the work to improve family support and for the experiences of children and young people. Independent Care Review said that the children's hearing system needs to shrink and specialise and that is a really important message. But that can only happen if we can be confident that the family support services that are sitting in and around um, the children's hearing system are there to support children and families to prevent referrals. So can we be sure that that support is in place so that referrals don't need to happen because, um, because um, uh, at-home help is, is there? And I think it's also true to say that the broader system is quite weary. So we heard throughout the, um, through the work to develop the recommendations that the workforce in particular um, is struggling with capacity, with staffing issues. And it's really important that that is acknowledged really strongly throughout the report and that that work to um, support workforce development to ensure that the workforce has the right people in the right places at the right time can't be seen as separate from this. Um, these recommendations will fail if they are not built on the strong foundation of strong holistic family support and a well-supported workforce to implement um, broader changes that are needed. So really, that's also just to say that structural change is needed. 
um, the current model um, of the children's hearing system is under some pressure. Um, the number of volunteers have, has reduced, recruitment is not what it was. And also the care and justice bill that is going through the Scottish Parliament at the moment is expecting to lead to an increase in the number of panel members there. We also know that the experience of children, families and professionals in the system is not as those as they would like it to be. So we do know that even aside from the promise that change is needed in and around the children's hearing system. So what is the report saying? First, that there needs to be an inquisitorial model. Um, the children's hearing system was built on the foundations of the Kilbrandon Review in the 1960s. Um, and that made clear that it was to try to create a different sort of tribunal for children and families. Now, so the Kilbrandon report landed at a time before there was the Human Rights Act, before a whole gamut of legislation developed, and before we had a really strong sense of the importance of um, codified children's rights. Now, all those things are important, but what we do know is that um, there has been an increase in the adversarial experience of children and families in the hearing. Um, the lawyers have brought lots of good things to hearings, but they have also shifted the dynamic and the tone of the debate. So in order to make sure that the children's hearing system is inquisitorial, so that means it's problem solving, it's looking to find things out, then it's not adversarial. Then what the um, working group is recommending is that grounds proceedings, so when there are contested grounds of referrals, that that is dealt with in the sheriff court rather than in the children's hearing system. The working group is also recommending a shift to the decision making model. Um, the volunteering model has been part of the children's hearing system experience since its inception. But what children and families have told um, us consistently and from um, before throughout the, throughout the independent care review was that um, continuity of decision making um, is absolutely key. So being able to see the same panel or same chair throughout the lifespan of a journey through the hearing is really important so that children and families don't need to retell their stories and also so that those people can have a real grip on proceedings and understand exactly what is going on in the lives, not only of the children and families, but also in relation to the implementing authority that come to the panel. The working group is not saying that that needs to be a particular profession. It's not saying that a chair of a panel needs to be um, a lawyer or a social worker. It is important that those roles are recruited on the basis of competencies and values rather than qualifications. <clears throat> So the report is saying that there should be salaried chairs and that we should retain lay panel members um, to sit alongside chairs but, and that those roles should be remunerated so that those people can really engage in, in the process and be supported and trained throughout their work. Another really key um, conclusion is that the children's plan needs to be the golden thread throughout the whole um, experience of children and families in relation to a variety of processes that they may be part of. Um, it was heard throughout the, um, throughout the work of the group, group that the, children, the child's plan often was sitting at the bottom of the pile of papers. It really needs to be absolutely front and centre in relation to what the panel is considering. And there needs to be a really strong relationship between the child's plan that, that, um, that comes to the hearing and the order that the um, hearing system makes. So what that means is that whatever is in the plan that's of really significant importance and needs to have an increased level of accountability then that needs to be in the order with a very high degree of specificity so that everybody knows what they're trying to achieve for that child or young person. Now, obviously, things go wrong in relation to the implementations of orders, and we know that to be the case um, throughout, again, the independent care review and through the work of the hearing system working group. But rather than trying to get into an accountability situation of blame, what the report is saying is that we need to take a problem solving approach to accountability. Now, we think that will be supported by a consistent decision maker and um, through the salaried chair. But we also think that's about the tone of the debate. So how can we make sure that the inquisitorial approach really needs problem solving accountability? So if things are not going right on an order because of a resources in a local authority or because of difficulties with compliance, we need to take a problem solving approach. So what can we do to make this better rather than um, taking a blame approach in relationship to, to, to those who appear before a panel. So that's just a really short whistle-stop tour of the Hearing System Working Group. As I said before, all the resources are on the website, so please do have a look at those at um, www.thepromise.scot and our email address is hello at thepromise.scot, so do please get in touch. Thanks very much.